everyone, it's Julia from Pumpkin Blur. This is my first um, ever YouTube video, so I hope you like it. If you do, subscribe. I don't know, is it up there or is it down there? I'm not sure. Um, anyway, today I thought um, I would try and recreate this kind of look. Um, I bought this for about 50p from a charity shop and it was white and cracked and hideous pretty much and I thought I'd make it into a nice varge, uh, vase even for staging some of my items. Um, so I've got this big beast here, there we go, look at this beauty um, or not, I don't think it's a beauty at all but I did love the shape and I wanted something this size that I could um, yeah use when staging my furniture um so i thought i'd recreate a kind of stony finish um on this because what i found is when i first started in this business as you can see um looking around the studio is i have a lot of staging items and i used to spend quite a bit of money on them which is really dumb pretty much um and so now this cost me a pound from a charity shop and we're going to make it look really expensive and something totally unique um yeah, so anyway, let's get started. So when you um, want to do a kind of stone finish, you normally use, well, you can use quite a few tones, but the most basic kind of use three tones of paint. Now I'm using Annie Sloan, um, and the base color I'm gonna do is um, Annie Sloan's first side, which as you can see is kind of greeny, gray color, but it's very stone-like. Um, so what I'm going to do is do a base coat, probably maybe even need two coats um, to cover these flowers up. Um, so if I get it, I'm going to tip it upside down because it makes it a little bit easier. Is I'm going to stip all the paint on. So I haven't bothered cleaning this. I pretty much haven't done anything to it um, apart from get the cobwebs off. Um, so you don't have to be careful with this at all. All you do is just get loads of paint on your brush and just stipple it on because you want the texture because the texture is what's going to make it look like the stone and this is a really really quick process so I think going over some of these flowers yeah I think we're definitely going to need a second coat but with the magic of YouTube um, we won't leave it to dry overnight I use the hairdryer on it So don't be a complete numpty like me and um, spend quite a bit of money on staging items. Go to your local charity shop or thrift shop. And um, yeah, it doesn't matter if, I mean, I hated the flowers on this, but I just really, really like the shape. And it had been exactly what I was looking for. I think the people in the shop thought I'd lost my mind. But hopefully they'll change their mind when they see it. And as I said before, if you can let it dry naturally, um, especially overnight they'll be better because the paint is thick but you can see how quickly I'm doing this and this is a pretty large blue vase and it doesn't matter if you're not perfect especially if you're adding another coat anyway right I think that is now ready for the hair dryer. <laughs> of doing this as well is that in some places it starts to crack um, which actually really kind of helps reinforce the kind of um, stone look that we're going for. Right that is the first coat pretty much dry as I said before um, if you can leave it overnight um, so much the better really but we don't obviously have time because that would be pretty dull. Um, so I'm going to go for the second coat. So exactly the same thing, still the same paint. So this is Versailles by Annie Sloan. And literally stipple it on again. And then all those pink flowers will be gone forever. So you don't have to, if you've only got 
some, you know, certain patches where the white or the pink's coming through, you can go over those so you don't have to give it a full second coat. So you could do like, you know, a coat and a half, for example. But I quite want mine to really crack. So I'm pretty much gonna do all of it. But don't feel you have to if the original color isn't coming through. with a hairdryer. Just on the side, if you wanted even more texture while it's drying, if you went over it with the brush again and just pulled the paint, it would make it thicker even still, so um, even more, so it would give you that really good sort of stony texture. Right, that's gonna have to do. Um, so, what we're gonna do now is kind of add the other colors in. Um, so the base coat was Versailles. What I'm going to use is actually a little bit of Annie Sloan Stock Egg Blue. So I'm just going to put it on the plate here. Sorry, excuse the disgusting noise. Um, and then a little bit of old white. obviously a bit more of a sight. So there's a couple of ways of doing this. What you can do is um, use sort of two brushes simultaneously. So example, um, if I put some old white on here and then some of the duck egg on here, you want to use less of the darker colour um, and more of the lighter and the Versailles. So, and then what you can do is like stipple straight on like that. But to be honest with you, what I find a bit easier, and it's just me, um, I think, but I actually kind of like picking up a few bits of colour on one brush and then because then it's kind of blending them for you anyway. And then if I need a bit more of the Versailles or a bit more of the white, then hopefully you can see that's having, giving it a sort of stony texture and you get the nice sort of patina. What I might do is add a little bit of um, old violet actually, to give it a little bit of depth. Obviously, if you wanted to make it look kind of green, like it's been in the garden for ages, maybe Amsterdam green. Um, so pretty much use colors that are pretty much close together and always use the sort of mid-tone of the colors you've chosen um, as the base coat. So if you think like, oh, like there, I think, oh God, it looks a bit bruised, so I've got too much old violet. So then you just go over um, with the facade. So let's get a few of that. Another colour that would be good for the base coat would be um, country grey. Um, it's another nice neutral, but I just like the sort of greeny tinge of the site. And again, it doesn't matter if you've got like lumps and bumps. Pretty much, it's pretty impossible actually to go wrong with this because if you don't like something you've done just add a bit more of the neutral colour or the darker colour or whatever and just keep going till you like it. So don't panic, when I first started painting I'd be so worried about trying to make everything kind of perfect and you know what, it actually doesn't really matter. I mean, obviously if you're doing furniture for people, commissions or stuff for, for sale, 
but obviously you want to make sure they're done beautifully but items like this that are just for your staging you can just have fun and kind of let loose which is the whole point of doing this really I think so that is the painting pretty much finished um, so if you have a look at it and think oh I don't like that sort of bluey bit down there and you want some of it to go just put some of the lighter colour and then we will make it come alive with waxes so what I'm going to do now is seal it with wax um, what I would normally do when um, waxing is actually use one of these brushes especially when you've got texture so you can actually get in but because this was artificially dried and it hasn't cured properly um, I'm actually going to use just a, a scrubby a sponge and to make them last longer I just chop them in two um, because I really don't want to dislodge any of this um, and have patches of the hideous pink flavors coming through um, so I'm using any flame wax again doesn't really matter whatever you have um, and what I normally do and I'm going to use my little can opener is put a bit of the wax actually on the lid so that if anything does come off I'm not contaminating um, my wax pot and then obviously wipe it off so I've got my lid I'm just pushing it in and now I'm being quite gentle with this as I said before I'm actually going to stipple in some places because I really don't want the, the paint to come off but say if you've let it dry overnight you're not going to have this issue anyway so And the reason I'm putting the clear on is because I want to do um, dark wax just to make it look even kind of older. So I think I can actually be a little bit more firm with it now. So pretty much you just do this all the way over. You can do it in sections, um, but if you work pretty quickly, um, you can be okay and if you apply too much dark wax you can always use the clear wax as kind of an eraser oh that's really clever isn't it so or drop it on the floor and get it covered in, in crap right so that is the clear wax on so I'm going to leave that open in case I need to use it as an eraser in a moment and now I've got Annie Sloan's dark wax um, again it doesn't have to be Annie Sloan's um, I like it because it's really really pigmented so it really gives that kind of crusty old look which is exactly what I'm going for so I've got the other half of the sponge now I do this in sections I actually want the bottom of this to be um, a bit darker than the top to look like it's been left outside um, so I'm gonna put it on again I would be using um, a wax brush a separate wax brush if this had dried you know overnight on its own and there you can see so we're starting to get like dirt going in there which is exactly what we want so and as I go up I'm gonna make keep it a little bit lighter so it looks more kind of true to life but again it's like with the painting you you pretty much can't go wrong with it if you think you've added a bit too much dark wax then here I'll show you, just literally get a bit of clear wax and then if you rub it over you'll see that it's taken the dark wax back which is why we put the clear wax to start with because it creates a barrier so I'm just going to keep going with this a lot of people are scared of um, of waxes especially dark wax and I think I was to start with um, because you just kind of think oh my god I've gone like way too crazy but if you've got that barrier of the clear wax beforehand and um, you keep a bit of clear wax out you can always just bring it back but best to just start light and then if you want to add more it's obviously a hell of a lot easier than trying to take away so obviously we'd get a lot more around the rim, for example, where the dirt would kind of 
where the dirt would go naturally. So what we can do there is what I do with furniture. I'm just going to take a bit of that off. Is, and actually use a brush because it's much easier to get in. And when I say a brush, I'm not talking about a wax brush. I'm actually talking about just a cra crappy 10p kind of brush. Because what you can do then is actually just really push it in where you want it to go. So you don't end up with one of those telltale kind of lighter bits where the, the wax hasn't gone in. Rub in here. So hopefully you can see that that's just added another dimension there. So it's all really about making something look as kind of realistic as possible and thinking where would something be lighter, where would it be darker. And I'm working with that because one dimensional kind of well it's just not realistic is it? Okay, I think I am pretty, pretty happy with that. Um, another tip, always have some baby wipes, um, especially when you've been waxing, because you will have very, very sticky hands. If you're more organised than me, obviously stick some disposable gloves on, but I think part of me is a child and actually likes getting dirty. So, um, Obviously, this you would not put outside because we just put wax on it. Um, you could use Annie Sloan's um, lacquer if you actually want it to be kind of outside, um, weatherproof. Um, but this literally is just for staging purposes. If you like the channel and you want to know when I post more videos, then subscribe. Um, and if there's anything you want to know or anything you'd like me to do, then just drop me a note in the comments and um, I'll see what I can do. Thanks a lot. Bye. Done.